Hello. I'm Iwan Briak, um, Associate Director of Theatre Forum Cymru. This is our base here in Goodick in Pembrokeshire. We've been going for about 10 years. Uh, we're a national charity. Uh, this is John. Hi. Our training manager. No. <laughs> uh, here we have Ruben, my colleague. Our uh, Associate Director. No. This is our volunteer from Sweden. Hello. Hi. And this is Jill, uh, one of our directors. Back to you, Jill. <laughs> okay. Hi, Karen. Hi, yeah. Uh, this is Karen, our administrator, a key part of the Rehearsal for Reality project. And we've got to explain Rehearsal for Reality and the Agora for the DVD. So. Right. Do okay. you mind if I use the, the space? So, no. Okay. Wish me luck. Good luck, you are. <laughs> <Okay>. Pop luck. <laughs> Pop luck. Okay. <clears throat> right. Rehearsal for Reality uh, is a project funded by the Assembly. It's a three year project um, to train communities all over Wales and helping them to identify policies that could be changed or created to improve their everyday lives. The outcome of that process, which up to now has taken a year and a half, under the title name Rehearsal of, for Reality and funded by the Assembly is this, the Agora Report. Well, it's not actually this, this is the draft. Opening this, you'll see several proposals for legislative change. On this page, we have the Swansea Youth Forum, and it is their story from uh, their first meeting with us in a dialogue day up to the Agora that we're going to follow so that you can understand the process that has led to these proposals. I must stress that these are not proposals made by us. We're an apolitical organization. This has entirely come from the communities and our role is to facilitate their empowerment to create this democratic dialogue. But the story <coughs> starts back in 1991 with a man called Augusto Boal. <coughs> in 1991, Augusto Boal was elected as a representative on the Council of Veriadores, the governing body for Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Now what's interesting about this is that Augusto Boal isn't a politician. He's a theatre director. And each Veriador has a council, a department of their own, and he employed his theatre group as the council. And they went out into the district of Rio de Janeiro, a population of about 25 million people, and used theatre techniques to find out what policies those community groups would like developed. That was the first legislative theatre experiment. We in Wales, in Theatre Forum Cymru, with the project Rehearsal for Reality, are doing probably the first national, if you can call Wales a nation, which I do, the first national experiment in legislative theatre. So the best way to explain legislative theatre is to see it in action. And that's why we conducted what we call dialogue days. We toured Wales, presenting the project, showing a little example of how it works to organisations uh, from all sectors, uh, individuals and community groups that were interested. And that was the beginning of the journey for many organisations such as the Swansea Youth Forum. So it's not enough just to say we're going to help you have a voice. You have to give people a voice that other people will hear, <coughs> that can be heard. And a good thing about using forum theatre is it helps to channel that uh, and contain that anger and actually the voice that's heard is much more powerful than somebody who they're just being angry. And so this story we did for the Voices from Care conference is a true story, okay? And this is actually, interesting enough, this is based on two people's experiences in Carmarthenshire. Yeah. Okay. Remember those forms I gave you last week? Oh. About the sheltered housing? Yeah. Have you had a chance to look at them? No, not really. Oh, come on, Glenn, okay? This is your chance to get your own house, to strike out on your own. In essence, yeah. Forum Theatre reenacts the true story, the depiction of a group or an individual's problem. Now, unlike normal theatre, we do not resolve that problem by the end of the play. The play is performed twice, and the second time it's performed, an audience member, any audience member, can shout stop, come up and take the place of the person with the problem and show what they would do in that situation and try and resolve that problem. I mean, how, how soon do you need these forms? They've got to be in next week, that's the problem. Next week, yeah. so what? I came across some information on the Dialogue Day through literature sent to me, and of course in my job, and thought I would attend that. It takes seeing it properly to really appreciate the power of it, the force of it, the, the, the actual, you know, uh, how, 
how kind of clever it is and how kind of effective that it is and the fact that it always does work. You, you, you can read about it, you can hear about it, and I find it's one of those really quite difficult things to explain to other people, but when people have been, the penny drops, and they say, ah, I see, I understand what it is, and they see it working, and they just say, I want to know more. Can we just stop there? How, how's it going? Better. better. Why is it better? What's better? Because she's explaining herself more. She's explaining herself more. Following the Dialogue Day, um, it seemed to me very pertinent that some organisations in Swansea, particularly the Youth Forum, and I'd been working with Lisa at that time and we'd been discussing other things, sh should actually know about it. So I attended the first weekend in Swansea with a lot of other people from various organisations and then we were off the opportunity to train for further three weekends with the Etta Forum in the whole process and the Joe Crin. Once we had enough groups trained from almost every county in Wales, we created a residential training and brought individuals, Lisa was the individual representing uh, the Swansea Consortium, together here in our base in Goodick to train over two weekends to be jokers. Uh, now jokers are not comedians, although it helps to have a sense of humour. They are the people who facilitate the process, who help the group create the piece of theatre and then act as a kind of bridge between the audience and the stage when it comes to performing the legislative theatre piece. A new concept. The idea that people could, we could actually recognise, hey, you, you guys might really know about X or Y. The idea that, you know, people who use the mental health service might really know about the mental health service. The idea that nurses might know about nursing. The idea that people with um, uh, um, uh, physical disabilities would know about that stuff is a comparatively recent idea, um, or it's gaining acceptance more recently, okay? What's the job of the Joker? Simply to enable that energy in the room to be released and to be seen by as many people as possible in the most visible way, in the clearest way. We were very okay. lucky to have Adrian Jackson come and deliver sure part of our training. He's our patron. He's also the translator of Augusto Boal's books. He's the, the man from Brazil who's invented this whole thing. But the real work started when all our newly trained jokers went back to their community groups and started to develop legislative theatre pieces towards the Agora. I think it's quite difficult for young people to get involved in the political process. There are certain young people that can, but a lot of people are excluded from the way that it works. Having been through the process myself, I felt this was a way to take their stories to the National Assembly in a way that made them feel involved. It was very exciting to think that you could tell your story without it actually focusing on you and that other people actually were feeling the same way. So part of the training package that Theatre Forum Cymru were offering uh, in the Rehearsal for Reality project was ongoing support for our freshly trained jokers to go back to their groups and to develop pieces of legislative theatre. What you see here is uh, Jill Dassett, our director, developing that piece of legislative theatre. And the first principle is really listening to people's stories and making a space safe enough for them to share those stories. When we got the young people together, it was quite obvious that there was quite a few stories that we could have used, um, and that they were very keen to express those stories through the, the medium of drama. There were several stories, but one of them was particularly good to take to the Agora, which was a story of a young person called Dom who had been bullied by a teacher at school, and ha which had quite a big impact on his career moves. She tripped me out of an exam, and she accused me of cheating, um, when she gave me the script in the first place. So but then I you told her that. I told her that, and she threw me out and called me a disgrace, and I shouldn't cheat in the exams and phoned the exam board. Uh, so I told her to get lost and get herself a job she could do properly. Out now. Why? What have I done? Just get out. Okay, they'll bring this problem to the agora, and it's up to the people who attend the agora to say, okay, is there a problem here? You know, it's not up to us to prescribe and say, look, this is the problem, this is the issue. It's up to us to say, is there a problem here? and hopefully people will say, yes, there is. What's the problem? For the, for the spectators to decide what the problem is, and then for, for them to say, okay, what possible solutions could there be? You know, um, all the chapters are working on bits of theatre to bring that highlights policies and legislation and issues that aren't working for them, so that we can creatively, at the Agora, get people to come in and say, oh, well, there must be solutions, and ideally to get policymakers there to say, to, to witness the different solutions that people come up with. 
Só dito, só dito. Só dito, só dito. Faster, okay, um, and and I'm going to be watching you like a hawk. And if at any point you think you've got a suggestion of what Dominic could do, can you put your hands up? If you do not put your hands up, the same scenario happens, which means he's failed his drama exam. Okay, I just like to stand. Up. I think it's quite interesting, really, seeing the actual seeing the actual uh, situation happen to me actually live on stage, and actually when uh, other people became involved in the actual piece and actually seeing how various other people's involvements can actually affect the outcome. The teacher is actually avoiding the situation. What you should do is mediation so that the teacher realises there's a problem there. If he moves out of the class, she'll just go on to the next uh, pupil. Could you come and do that mediation role for us? Yeah. This is the experiment in creative democracy in action. The audience are no longer spectators, but spectators. Fully engaged in a dialogue that involves not just words, but actions. You don't seem to understand, Fred. You're a pupil, I'm a teacher. I've been doing this for 15 years. Oh. Yeah, I, I know, but there's no need to, to really patronise me, is there? I mean, are there any... any, are there any... <laughs> Every action. Every suggestion, every intervention is recorded by a scribe. It is this record which forms the basis for the debate oh, in metabolizing cells. You can put them in meetings, but well, by all means, you put them in meetings all the time. But they only say certain people that will say the right thing at the right time. And they don't have the information beforehand. They are briefed beforehand. They've got no support there at the time. That's always a risk. You can't engineer every system, but if you've got a structure which says the school governing body will take a report from the school council. And it is in this space, in the metabolizing cell, that the proposals themselves are drafted. Not just by politicians, but by all who have been moved by the piece of theatre. We've got the ethical framework, we've got the proposal about supervision and reviews, etc. We've got the continuous training for heads and teachers, etc. So, that in a nutshell is how this document and the proposals in it came about. I hope this documentary has given you an impression of how many people's hard work has gone into making this uh, a reality and working on the project rehearsal for reality. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all those people on behalf of Theatre Forum Cymru for their hard work. Now, as the saying goes, it's over to you. It's just, you know, exactly what I want to see myself. And one of the things for me, an action for next year, is to make sure that more AMs are actually involved in this process. And I think when people sit down and look what's happened with this three-day event, I'm sure one of the things they want to do is to relate it more to elected people who are supposedly in a position of power to change things. Um, I think it is good that the National Assembly and various other people are actually taking notice of it and actually came along to watch it. It's a good experience. I thought it was an excellent way of looking at an issue actually because I mean, very often um, we're looking at things sim simply from papers put in and uh, maybe somebody has, has just spent, sent in a specific complaint. Um, the, the ability to go back round an issue, looking at it with various different possibilities coming up, was very refreshing. It blew my mind. It's one of the most important experiences of my life, I think. I thought that that, that, that means of getting uh, people to think about the issues kind of from their guts, not just in their heads, um, was brilliant. I was most impressed.